from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering InterConnect 2017. Brought to you by IBM. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Las Vegas for IBM InterConnect 2017. The Cube coverage from SiliconANGLE Media. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante, our next guest Tom Reddy, Senior Vice President with State Street Corporation. Welcome to the Cube. Thank you, thank you. Um, so, State Street, obviously financial um, powerhouse you guys have, and that we were just talking before we came on about the Red Sox <laughs> yeah, season tickets. You guys pavil own a pavilion there. Um, <laughs> love Fenway Park, always great to, to visit. Uh, but seriously, IBM, you, you had history with IBM and State Street. Mm -hmm. What's going on? Why are you here? What's the, what's the conversations? Well, we've, um, we've, as you said, right, we probably go back 30 years in terms of the relationship State Street has with IBM, um, starting traditional technology, right, so um, uh, hardware and software, uh, and evolved uh, to a much more dynamic services relationship um, about four years ago, right, where uh, uh, combined uh, with IBM and Wipro, um, we've taken advantage of their capabilities both in application and infrastructure management, um, and, uh, and, and transition quite a bit of our services uh, from in-house managed to, uh, to IBM. Managed. And your scope specifically in your role? Uh, my uh, the responsibilities I have are around infrastructure management, so which is the primary uh, responsibility IBM has, right? Wipro's on the application side of the house. So. Okay, so big hybrid cloud discussion, right? Yes. So <laughs> what does that all mean from a practitioner's perspective? Well, I, I think our challenge, um, candidly, is uh, we probably have about 1,700 applications, give or take, deployed today within the enterprise, within our enterprise, um, and predominantly hosted within our own core data centers. Um, and and as, other as other financial uh, companies and GSIFs, right, we're a little, we have been a little reluctant to take advantage of the emerging capability and, um, and opportunity that the cloud represents. Uh, so we're starting our journey now to, uh, to entertain um, IBM's ca capability in, in SoftLayer, where we've got an initiative underway uh, to move the predominance of our development effort, uh, development uh, infrastructure there, uh, so our development uh, teams can take advantage of, the, of that you know, capability, if you would, speed. Um, so, so uh, it, it's, it's a mix of understanding what they've got, it's a mix of understanding how we take advantage of it. Uh, it's, it's, it, it really is a challenge for us to understand um, uh, as those capabilities evolve, uh, how, how a company like ours can continue to take advantage of it, not just for development, but for real production work. So, right? so obviously you remember Y2K very well, and yep. everybody, every CIO went through an application portfolio assessment before that, is, yep. it was sort of, Entering a new wave of that assessment, understanding the portfolio, yeah, what's well, cloud mean, ready and not, and well, I, I think anyone would say it's it's ongoing. It's, you know, it's yeah. one of the chapters in the in the playbook, right? Mm. Kind of application rationalization. Uh, I think a challenge that that companies like we have are um, uh, one of the one of our growth models is through acquisition. So every time we acquire another company, we just acquired two this year. It comes with some additional um, applications that that honestly have to be rationalized back in, right? So, so that's, the, that's kind of what we've got, right? And, and combine that with uh, data placement um, as it relates to privacy because we've got an awful lot of data under, under management. Um, that's another challenge that has to be factored So in. talk about the application developer scene in, in, in your world, because if you look back, I mean, we were kind of joking on a previous interview about Throwback Thursday and Hackathon for a mainframe. Yeah. There's a lot of workloads that are legacy enterprise that are mm -hmm. mission critical, and yeah. you guys are a great example that probably have, you know, from soup to nuts, from old school to new school cloud native going on. But the, the rage right now is enterprise readiness, enterprise grade, mm -hmm. enterprise strong, as yeah. Ginny Rometty was saying. But the app developers, it's been around for a while, but what's the new mojo, what's the new vibe, what's the new culture like for developers in a large institution like State Street? Well, we've been, we've been uh, uh, pushing the agile, the agile framework and the Agile method, right? We, we, we uh, undertook that about three years ago. Um, we've got uh, 200 certified teams, right, at State Street that uh, are actually using Agile now, and that's across probably six of the eight platforms that, they, that, we, that we run code on, everything from the mainframe all the way out to open systems, right, the, uh, distributed systems. Um, you know, we, we've got some stagnant platforms like AS400, we still have a few AS400s kicking around and uh, uh, some DEX systems still sitting, tandem DEX, right? So, so uh, some of that isn't necessarily lend itself. Who supports those DEXs? Yeah. <laughs> 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 so it doesn't necessarily lend itself to, uh, you know, to, to you know, multiple deployments, right? We just don't do much in that space, but but um, yeah, I, I mean, they're energized around. Um, are they on the agile bandwagon? Obviously, agile is pretty huge they now. Are. They are. They absolutely are. Um, 
and and honestly, it's, it's been a little bit tough for the infrastructure teams to keep up, right? It, it's and so we're not unique in that regard either, right? Um, so one of the approaches that, that 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 was done a few years ago is we do have our own um, uh, platform as a service that we developed our own orchestration model going back five years. Uh, and and uh, the majority of that is supported today by the application teams, right? So application teams uh, using agile-based methods, deploying onto that platform as a service, so that seems to work for us, right? Um, where the challenge becomes is for the, for the apps that don't run there, how do we, and, and as, we, as we look to deploy those applications into, into SoftLayer, how, how does that, if you would, seamless deployment work, right? From, from a SoftLayer development environment and test environment back into production and that's, that's what we need to learn. So you've got Bluemix and your own PaaS yep. sort of coming together, right? That's right. And, and so, I mean, it's just a little out of your scope, but, but what does that mean, and maybe specifically, what does it mean from an infrastructure perspective? Well, I, I, I mean, clear, you know, as I said, we've started that journey right now. So um, uh, we'll have a thousand hosts migrated by the, end of the, by the end of the year. That's the current target we've got uh, with full deployment um, across in, into, uh, into the hybrid cloud probably within a year and a half from now, right? Um, so, so as we undertake that journey, they'll, they're going to have to learn, the, the, the development teams are going to have to learn. The, the, the underlying service, service components, infrastructure service components, right? We're, we're probably being a little heavy with that now so that the development and test environments are exactly like the production environments are now. Um, we'll probably pair that back as they understand what they need and don't need. Um, so I, I, I challenge on us to speed. That's our current challenge. How quickly can we get things turned up for them? Challenge on them on, with regard to what they need, right? Um, so, uh, so Tom, from a practitioner's perspective, what's the driver for a hybrid cloud? Is there, are there specific use cases? Is it, is it agility? Is it bursting? Mm -hmm. Help us understand that. Well, for us, uh, uh, it's, it's it's, it's probably all of that, right? I, I think that the, the, the challenge that any legacy shop like ours has is um, as you adopt, what's the speed by which you, you go to the cloud, the hybrid cloud, right? Um, we've got our own centers, right? There's a financial model that needs to be achieved. Um, you know, as we do rationalization and data center consolidation, that feeds it, right? So, so it ends up going at a rate and pace that isn't necessarily in line with the speed that, that, that uh, a new company would potentially take advantage of or, or that, a, that a forced migration um, w would perhaps yield as well, right? So it's, it's a little bit of both. So it's to support that extra, little extra agility, kind of give you a tailwind for, for that initiative, or? Well, I, 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 yeah, it, it's it's to it's to enable the application guys clearly, right? And then, so, but 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 we you know, you know the, the ideal benefit on the infrastructure side becomes burstability, right? Um, and the ability you know for that capacity to come up quickly, right? And and uh, and today you know we'd struggle with that using you know traditional infrastructure based models. Yeah, we we are con extremely interested in in some of the work that IBM's got going on with regard to. Um, how some of these clouds actually comply with regulatory um, requirements, right? You know, we operate in 29 countries and have to satisfy 48 different regulators, so the work that they've got going on uh, with, um, you know, understanding what a cloud, what a regulatory compliant cloud is, and, uh, and uh, which authorities does it satisfy, and which, which can, you know, what, the, what do those controls look and feel like? Um, that may actually you know, be something that we could take advantage of fairly quickly. Right? And uh, can we talk about the security discussion yeah, sure. a little bit? I, I mean, most people, I think, you know, early on in the cloud days, like, oh, cloud. I think most people would agree that there's a lot of advantages to the cloud from a security standpoint. That said, mm -hmm. there's also a lot of specials yeah. that a company like yours requires. Yeah. So it's not necessarily good or bad in the cloud, it's just, does it meet the edicts of our organization? Yeah. I wonder if you could talk about that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I, I, I think we've evolved, our policies have evolved, and, and I think the regulators have become clearer with regard to what it is they want and what they don't want, right? Uh, I think all three of those things uh, have mm. helped, right? So, um, when we look at the security policies that we have to adhere to, right? They, our, our CISO teams have been working fairly uh, consistently and tightly with the different regula regulatory entities with regard to what it is we think we need to adhere to, right? That clarity allows us then to begin to look at the marketplace, understand what, what capabilities are there and begin to, uh, to procure and use those, right? So, 
So, uh, yeah, I think it's come a long way, but not only is the capability of the providers come a long way, it's the clarity you, uh, you know, around the, the controls and the regulatory. And, and what role and involvement do you have in, in security? Are you a sort of recipient of the edict and you have to enforce it? <laughs> Are you a contributor? Do you have a meeting with the board? Yeah, I, I think it's a little bit of everything, uh -huh. right? So, um, yeah, we receive, we're, we're the recipient of the policies, <laughs> if you would, so, uh, and, and so therefore I have to be compliant with them. Uh, we participate in how those policies are set, right? So there's a process within our firm where uh, we sit down, talk about um, uh, emerging threats, talk about what policies perhaps should be implemented and then agree up upon uh, what those policies are and the time frames for adoption, so we have that. Uh, and, and, then, um, and then the team, my team, for the controls it's responsible for, uh, have to stand up to, uh, to regulatory oversight, right? So the term we use is first line of defense, right? Um, so we're the, we're the control owners and, uh, and our controls have to satisfy our own policies and external regulators. You know, one of the things I want to drill into, it brings up how hard it is with the cloud and, and IT in general these days, and you know, Dave's in Massachusetts, I'm in Silicon Valley in Palo Alto. In Silicon Valley, it's like, oh yeah, new toy, you know, yeah. shiny new toy, so let's go 100, fast and loose. In fact, Mark Zuckerberg once said, move fast, break stuff. Now they've gone to move fast, be secure. So, <laughs> your world is, doesn't really, I mean, you want to go fast and loose to get innovation, yep. but you have to also manage really, really heavy um, requirements around the compliance and other right. security things. So that's you got to right. balance that. So that's a very tricky thing. So can you share some insight into what it takes to do that? Because you want to have DevOps, mm -hmm. development and operations being faster and more nimble yep. Yep. with Agile. At the same time, you want to keep the pace of innovation and not be in the stone age. So what's the trick, what's the secret, what have you learned? Share some anecdotal data yeah, or real data. I, um, I, you know, we, we started out, when we first looked at, um, at, at hosting op, op offerings and opportunities five years ago, we didn't really think for a combination of cap capability that was available generally in the marketplace um, and the controls we thought we needed around that. Uh, we didn't think they were where they needed to be, so we developed our own, right? So that's the far end of the spectrum where a firm like ours actually spent money and time to, to deploy orchestration for platform as a service. So that we started there. Uh, you know, we've, you know, if we think of the continuum of that journey, we're, the, we're to the point now where we're considering using um, hosting companies that have the same or similar capability and, and, and we're at an inflection point with regard to where are we going to make our investments, right? Are we going to continue with our own or actually begin to migrate, right? Um, so, so, you know, honestly, our challenge is just that, right? How do we progress on that journey? Um, because as is always the case, it becomes very difficult when, when uh, when you're, when you're out of your sweet spot and owning your core competency to maintain the investments that are needed. Um, and, the, and in this particular case, it's pretty classic, right? For us to keep pace with what the likes of IBM or Amazon or any, any of them are doing, tremendous investment stream, right? And, uh, and, and, and we'd question whether that investment's in, in, uh, is best suited you know, from a shareholder's it's point of view. It's a buy or build thing, too. If That's you think right. about it, it's because one of those things you say, okay, well, I'm going to rely on IBM Cloud, or AWS or whoever could be the provider, it could be like an RFP process. That's right. You just got to start thinking, so you, got, you look at it that way. We do, we do, and brokerage is going to help us there, right? So we'll, we'll get brokerage up and running fairly soon. Um, and assuming the capabilities are somewhat similar or, or, uh, or neutral, if you would, then, then we'll let the application team pick what they want based upon uh, what their specific yeah. requirements are. So I got to ask are. you in the few minutes we have left, yeah. obviously Ginny's up there, and I've been, a, I've been a big believer for a long time that data uh, mm -hmm. is the key asset, and we've been saying it for a long yep. time, but I, Dave and I were going back almost 10 years ago talking about data as a development asset yep. for developers. But she said something pretty compelling, data is you own the data. Yeah. That's profound, now we believe that to be the case, because if you're renting everything, and you're buying or you're building your own, the data becomes the critical layer of value. You got to protect it, it's obviously your financial data, yeah, so yeah. it's secure. How do you guys look at the data layer as, as an architectural philosophy? Well, uh, we have 12, probably over 12 petabytes under management today, so it's a pretty, pretty significant uh, uh, environment for us to manage. Um, the challenge, honestly, isn't, uh, we, we've got, we've got uh, the business side of the house wants to take advantage of that data because it's got an awful lot of client information within it. Uh, that, that um, we should be able to take to market the right way, right? Clearly client confidentiality is important. Um, but, but the data actually becomes a little bit of a, um, a millstone, if you would, around us. 
because we've got privacy concerns over all of that data, right? So, so and, and that data is um, is grown up over time. So, strong lineage doesn't necessarily exist, right? So, a real strong data framework isn't there for us to understand whose data it is, when, what state it happens to be, and where where it sits at rest. So, it's an investment. And then the motion piece is kicking up huge. It is. The Apple it with, is. The, with the mobile devices. That's right. You got That's motion right. going. On. Yep. So, so, so it does all come back to the data, but it it does require a pretty strong. Uh, framework around the data for you to actually be able to take advantage of it, right? It so. kind of leads to the digital transformation discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a big buzzword today. Now you guys, you know, you're not servicing, you know, mom and pop consumer, you know, situations, big yep. institutions. Um, but nonetheless, uh, their data implies digital, implies, you know, you're changing your business model. Yes. You got smaller companies that are disrupting your mm -hmm. business. So what does it all mean to you generally and specifically to the infrastructure? Are you guys developing you know, SaaS products, mobile apps that have an imp that ripple down effect to your infrastructure? Well, we, we don't have, you wouldn't think of State Street as a retail operation. Right, right? Of course. So, so we don't have that, right? But, but there is a need um, for probably a third of, our, um, of, of, of my colleagues to have uh, access to uh, data mo you know, via a mobile framework. So that's internal. Internal, yeah. right? In terms of external clients, we, you know, we do have a, a, a framework uh, that, that we are that we do provide through a through um, my State Street. Uh, it's a it's a it's an internet portal, and it's all back office, middle office data that they would typically access. Um, do, do they require that to be generally mobile? You know, mo, mo, is it mobile enabled? I guess is the term I'm struggling with. Right. Um, our competition hasn't gone there, and and so we're undertaking the evaluation that says, do we need to go there from a from a differentiation perspective? Mm -hmm. Right. But, but traditionally, people are accessing that data through web-based portals uh, and, and uh, using it in their day job that way. Our clients are, right? So. Tom, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate it. Quick uh, end to the segment. Your impression of the event here, people that are watching aren't here, so they can't feel the vibe. What's your take of the show this year? Certainly, we've been seeing the digital traffic yep. on IBM Go doubled from World of Watson, which we thought was the hottest show <laughs> IBM's ever done. Looks like Interconnect is, seems to be the hottest. What's the conversation, what's the vibe like? What's the experience here? I, 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 I generally like the collaboration that takes place in these kinds of things, right? And I think, I think what IBM's done here in terms of how they've laid out the center, you know, all of the space that's available, um, the sessions have all been uh, uh, reasonably co collaborative. I, you know, you go to some of these things where you kind of fall asleep in the back row. I haven't necessarily seen much of that here, right? Yeah. So uh, kudos to IBM for, for, uh, for, for running this the way they have, right? Yeah, so. it's very engaging content. It is. Tom, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Really yeah, appreciate no your insight and sharing okay. uh, what's going on at State Street Corporation. Um, I used to call it State Street Bank from being from New England 18 years ago, but yep. great to see you and hope to see you at a Red Sox game. Sounds good, guys. We'll be hitting you for some right. tickets. Thanks, so yeah, yeah, only really. kidding. Only <laughs> kidding. <laughs> this is the Cube, of course. Always trying to get the Red Sox tickets. <laughs> I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. Stay with us. More great interviews coming right up here. Day two of three days of coverage of IBM Interconnect 2017. We'll be right back. <laughs>